Hello, and welcome to This Month in Games! My name is Jeremy Reimer, and I'll be your guide every month to the most interesting and notable game releases in the AAA and indie spheres. It's the middle of May of 2020, and as of this recording, we're all still stuck inside because of the zombie apocalypse, so why not play some games? Ready? Okay, let's go! Animal Crossing is the new stay-at-home sensation that's sweeping all of the nations. You play as a human who wins a trip to a deserted island, along with a bunch of sentient animals. Your job? Turn this island into a thriving paradise by flying to other islands, clear-cutting them and stripping them of all their resources, then constructing an endless supply of junk furniture that you sell to the Nook Corporation, which is kind of like Amazon if it were combined with a global central bank and owned by a single raccoon version of Jeff Bezos. Pay off your home loan so you can immediately take out a new one. Lure more animals to your island. Speculate on term turnip prices on the stock market. Is it an idyllic time waster or a searing commentary on capitalist dystopias? Why not both? Actually, Animal Crossing is slow-paced, relaxing, and fun. The game runs in real time, so if Tom Nook says your new host will be ready tomorrow, he really means tomorrow. This actually helps because it stops you from playing the game for hours on end. It's a chill game, so take a break. You can also visit your friends' islands, so it could be a social game as well. Someone has even made a talk show called Animal Talking set entirely in the game. Doom Eternal is the sequel to Doom 2016, and it continues that game's tradition of arm-ripping mayhem. This time you can do crazy dashes in midair to close the distance on your opponent, along with other new tricks. The single player campaign is about 15 hours long, but it's relentlessly fast paced and well designed. Multiplayer has improved as well, with the addition of a 2v1 Demons vs Slayer battle mode. Basically if you like Doom 2016, you'll like this. I don't have much else to say about it. It's Doom! Again! It's good! Half-Life Alex isn't quite Half-Life 3, but this VR-only title gives me the same giddy feelings I had when Half-Life 2 came out. Back then it felt like this was a defining moment in video games, a moment where immersion suddenly went through the roof and the possibilities of messing around with physics engines seemed limitless. Bear with me because I'm going to talk about this one a lot. The first thing I did in Half-Life Alex was pick up a tin can and throw it at a pigeon. Because I suck at throwing in VR exactly as much as in real life, I missed, but the pigeon flew away anyway. At that point, I was hooked. You can do silly things like put buckets on your head, write with markers on whiteboards, and collect junk items in a bucket and carry them around. If you're careful, you can even take them with you between levels. I picked up a denied stamp and whacked dead combine soldiers with it. Later I used the same stamp to get past these horrible ceiling creatures with the long tongues. When you're in VR and fighting off enemies, you ha actually have to eject your clip, pull a new one out of your backpack, then slap it into the pistol and slide the lock before you can fire. Needless to say, doing all this in the middle of a firefight is intense. But there are plenty of hero moments as well, like when you get the shotgun and take up four headcrab possessed zombies like a badass. Even the puzzles are fun, involving figuring out 3D alien user interfaces. Everything is physical and involves movement. To get past a door, you'll pull a wheel out from a railing, attach it to the door, and turn it. To use a healing station, you pull down a lever and put your hand on a panel. It's about a 15 hour campaign, but you get rewarded for slowing down and finding more secrets. The environments are the most realistic I've ever seen in VR. It's not an exaggeration to say that this feels like the dreams I always had about being literally inside a video game world. This isn't always a good thing. The Half-Life world can feel claustrophobic, alien, slimy, scary, downright depressing at times. But if you have a VR headset, it's a must-buy. Next up are a couple of remakes of old classics, Resident Evil 3 and Final Fantasy 7. Resident Evil 3 is the second remake in the series for Capcom, and it's exactly what a modern reimagining of the game should be. The graphics are slicker, the gunplay smoother, and overall it's a stylish and tight retelling of the old take of zombies taking over Raccoon City. But it's also shorter, about 6 hours in total of gameplay, so that's worth noting. Final Fantasy VII went the other way. Instead of cutting content out, they put more in. This remake is so huge that it only covers about a quarter of the original storyline, just the parts inside the city of Midgard. If you were a fan of the original, and millions of us were, it's worth checking out. 
but is it just me, or are there a lot of remakes being made these days? Can we not come up with some original stories? Well, we'll probably have to rely on indie games to save us from endless remakes and sequels. So first up is Ori and the Will of the Wisp, the sequel to the fascinating Ori and the Blind Forest from 2015. This isn't just a quick cash-in sequel, though. The art style is more lush and colorful, the story is richer and more emotional, and the whole experience transcends the original. This is what sequels should be like. Definitely worth picking up if you enjoy Metroidvania-like platformers. Cloudpunk is an indie cyberpunk adventure where you get to fly your car around a beautiful, voxel-rendered, blade Blade Runner-like city landscape. You're a regular working stiff who took a job with a dubious courier company called Cloudpunk. Mostly it's a game about exploring a neon-filled city and talking to people, but behind the simple mechanics lie a rich and interesting game. Worth picking up. And coming out of early access this month is Raft, a survival game where you start out on a tiny wooden square in the middle of the ocean and use your hooks to pull in junk from the sea to build a more durable raft. There's also a co-op mode that's tons of fun for a whole group of castaways. Well, that about wraps it up for this month. Stay tuned for the next episode of This Month in Games.